What's up, everybody? Lawrence Aponte here, and I want to welcome you to episode number five of the Ecom Power Team. And in this specific episode, I'm going to be answering your questions that you guys have asked in the Ecom Power Team back office, where you can select a category, ask the question, and either post a video or a screenshot. So basically, I'm just going to go through a few questions here, and I'm going to show you the demonstration or give you some strategy to go along with it. So some of the topics that we're going to cover doing this is scaling a winning Facebook ad. I'll kind of give you some bullet points and some tips and some tricks that I use when I want to scale my Facebook ads. Also, we're going to be covering new product ad launch sequence. So a question asked, um, they want to know how, what kind of launch sequence do you go through when you launch a new product? And then I'll also cover video ads versus picture posts. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. So question number one, currently I average about $500 a day in sales from Facebook ads. I like to scale up. Any recommendations? And I think this is an awesome question because once we do find that winner, we tend to, you know, we are hesitant on how we can get the most out of that. So I kind of break down how you can scale um, a winning Facebook ad in this slide here. So ways you can scale a winning ad. So these are the ways that I like to scale ads. Everybody's different, but these are the ones that kind of work for me and what I've um, tested on. And number one is just duplicating a winning ad set. So if you have a, a winning ad set that's just winning and you're getting sales from it consistently for a few days, I would just go ahead and duplicate it exactly the same and go ahead and let that one run and see how it measures up against the other one. You can duplicate it once, twice, or even three times and let them measure against themselves and see which one proves to be the winner over the next few days. Okay, another one, another simple way you can um, scale a winning ad is simply by raising the budget on winning ad sets. That's a pretty simple one. If you have a $5 ad set, you can go ahead and raise it to $10, right? If you have a $10 ad set, go ahead and raise it to $15. I would raise it between 10 to 20 percent up to 30 dollars and then i wouldn't go higher than that i i i found in scaling that when you go higher than 30 dollar ad set facebook tends to spend your money a little more reckless and it doesn't optimize as well another way you can scale um a winning ad set is by trying different ad campaign objectives right so if you're running for instance a website conversion campaign that's geared towards add to cart, try running one that's geared towards add payment info or purchase, right? Because each ad campaign targets a different section of the audience. So it's best to try different ones, especially when you're scaling out to see where your winners are. Okay, another way that you can scale um, a winning ad is by creating a lookalike audience. OK, and you could create these lookalike audiences based on people that are that view content, right? Anybody that's clicked on the link or people that have added to cart or you can even go to your Shopify back office. You can download your customer list. Then you can reload that customer list up to Facebook as a custom audience and then create a lookalike audience based on that customer list and run ads to them. Those can be extremely powerful and finding a new base audience to run ads to and, and bring in some more sales. Okay, another way to scale a winning ad is by expanding and finding different interests to target. So I would go in and do um, some more research into audience insights and find some more related interests that you can target and then go after the audience and see how well they react to the product. Okay, and Another thing you can do is chop up the audience into sections. And what I mean by that is you can actually um, go into your reports and look up, um, you know, whether the, the last three to seven days of data and see where your money states are, see where the, the states that are selling the most are and make ads that are geared towards them. Or if there's a specific gender or maybe there's a specific age group or maybe even all three. At the end of the day, you want to just try to chop up that audience as much as you can and put money into each one of those sections. And then lastly, um, you can expand into other countries of the world, right? You don't just have to just stay restricted to just, per se, the United States. You can go after Canada and Mexico and the United Kingdom and Germany, 
in Australia and New Zealand, right? You can target all these English speaking countries and, you know, nine times out of 10, they, there's people that are identical like us and that like the same type of products and, and they'll buy. One thing you need to do is if you are um, expanding to other countries, just to make sure that you have your shipping rates set up for that specific country. If not, you'll run into some, um, your customers will run into problems checking out if you don't have it geared towards that. Okay. So question number two is when launching a new product, what kind of ads do you use? It, this is also another question that, that was frequently asked that a lot of people seem hesitant or they, they they kind of seem stuck on what new kind of ad or excuse me, what kind of um, ads you should launch with a new product. And here's kind of like my little breakdown of what I like to do when I launch um, a new product and I'm measuring it. So I like to run two different type of campaigns off the rip. And one is going to be a page post engagement campaign, also known as PPE, if you look at the top one. And basically what a PPE campaign is, is Facebook is going to show your ad to the people that are most likely to engage. It's going to show the, your ad to people that are most likely to like, comment, share your post, right? And why I want that is because I want to measure engagement, okay? And I want to get an audience feel and gain some social proof from that. So I like to run small little $5 ad um, ads uh, to this specific PPE post. And depending on the audience, I'll either run one or two different ad sets, depending how big the ad is, or excuse me, how big the audience is. Okay, and I also like to run those in correlation with a website conversion campaign. And um, depending if your pixel has data, okay, and when I say data, I mean, I mean like more than, a hundred purchases, you know, a few hundred add to cards, a few thousand view contents. Okay, so depending if your pixel has data or not, um, I, you can either start with um, one ad set that is uh, view content and one ad set that's add to cart if your pixel does not have data. And if your pixel does have data, you can start with add to cart and purchase. Okay, so I like to run those two different ad sets in correlation with one another and let them and let them go after each other and see which one performs better. And I like to run these ads for a minimum of three days or until I reach around 3000 people, depending on um, what what what's going. So if, if I run run them for three days and I've only reached maybe a thousand people, I may let it run for another day or two until that 3000 um, people is reached, right? I, I've kind of seen that you can kind of measure an audience on that. And especially if you have a few days of optimization and your ads being distributed to the audience, you can gain and see if you're going to have a winner or not. Okay. And uh, question number three is are video ads more effective than a static picture post on Facebook? And so it really depends on the situation, but I like to use both of them. So you guys see how I did that? It really does depend on the situation. If you can see on the left-hand side, you just have a picture post of me with the same thing that I just said in the video. And you can kind of see which one caught your eye and which one went for you, right? So I'm a big fan of video ads and videos when you have a great product to demonstrate, especially if it's a useful product or if it's a problem-solving product. Video ads are great so you can demonstrate that. And pictures are, are also great if you have something that's really shareable or there's something that really pops. But what I like to do best is kind of like use them in correlation with one another. And I'll kind of break that down in another slide, but right here, I'll kind of show you like the, 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 um, the little pros and cons of both of them. So with starter picture posts, um, it looks more native, right? It looks like something that is just kind of belongs with Facebook and it's just kind of there, which means that the person is probably more likely to share because it looks more native and organic. And remember, pictures are definitely worth a thousand words. So if you have a really nice picture and it pops, it can really say a lot. Now, video ads, um, you'll get more bang for your buck. You definitely notice a low CPM and you get more reach simply because Facebook is just trying to take over the video, the video industry, right? They want to take over the video market. So they're giving more favorable, uh, more reach to, to videos, right? Another thing about video ads is you can build a custom audience of viewers. So Facebook gives you the capability of um, making custom audiences based on people that watch a small percentage of your video, half your video, or even the entire video, which can become very powerful for retargeting and making lookalike audiences. 
Um, also with video ads, you can display the product more effectively. Like I was saying earlier, if the product is a problem solving product, you can actually demonstrate this and show how it works and the uses of it and, and the problem that it's solving, which can be a great visual on um, uh, using Facebook ads. Okay, and whereas pictures are worth a thousand words, videos are worth a million words. So if you have a great video that pops, that, that brings a lot of attention, it, it, it's great to use. Okay, so here's kind of like a, some video ad sequences that work. This is directly from Facebook. They, they've gathered some data and um, I've actually used all three of these methods and they work extremely well. So if you look at the top section there, um, phase one was a four day um, experiment where they used just a regular picture and then they retargeted um, with a video, with the same video of that same item, okay? And well, by them doing this combination of a picture and then for four days and then a video for four days, this drove more visitors to the marketer's site than the person that wasn't using the sequence. Okay, so that's great. That's a that's just a static picture with, with the video. Now, if you look at section B, people that used a video for phase one for four days and then use the same picture as the thumbnail as the video for four days was most effective at driving visits to the marketer's site at 1.7 times. So almost double when they use a video first and then retargeted with the thumbnail picture of that video. And if you look at um, section C of, of the phase is where they used a video, okay, where they used a video of the same item, but when they retargeted, they used a different picture other than the thumbnail of the video. And this one was really effective in driving more online conversions by 1.3 times compared to the people that didn't do it. So as you can see, when you um, use either one, they are powerful, but when you use them in correlation with one another, that's when they, the magic really happens, when you can really drive more visitors to your site or when you can really increase those conversions. Okay, so this is the end of um, this episode of Ecom Power Team. I hope you guys got a lot of value out of it. Um, if you want to ask your own questions and, and get them possibly featured on here or get them asked by our panel of Ecom experts, I suggest you just go to the back office, click on Ecom Power Team, and then you can actually select the category of the question that it belongs to. You can ask your question. You can even attach a screenshot or video if necessary. And one of us will get to you and answer your question, or you'll even get the chance to have your question featured here on Ecom Power Team. Till the, ex the next episode, guys, this is Lawrence Aponte signing off. Peace.